Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook to put up much better overall numbers tonight. And I expect Golden State to win yet another very close game, another barn burner. I cannot wait. But I especially expect Kevin Durant to be much better than 3 for 12 as he was in the fourth quarter the other night. And Russell Westbrook to be much better than 1 for 4 as he was in the fourth quarter the other night. Conversely, above and beyond all that, I expect a whole lot more from the two-time MVP, Steph Curry, who was one for six in that fourth quarter. I expect Golden State not to go one for ten from three. And Stephen A., bottom line to the other night, this is my conclusion yesterday, the brunt of the blame has to fall on the slender shoulders of Steph Curry. I expect him to rise and shine tonight, and if they are going to win this game, as you call it, a must-win game, at home, game two, Steph Curry is going to have to be the best player on the floor above both Durant and Westbrook. Well, I also need, Skip, I totally agree with you. I think that Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant will put up considerably better numbers. They'll be more efficient, more lethal, which obviously will call for a tight contest. But I think Golden State will answer the bell because of the level of urgency. And I think they will win a close, hardly, you know, hardly fought contest tonight in game two. But what I will say is that let's not just put it on Steph Curry. How about Andre Iguodala and Sean Livingston? These brothers can play. Um, you need contributions from them, particularly when you consider the fact that Deion Waiters and Enos Cantor come off the bench and make a contribution for OKC. Your depth has to answer the call. And dare I say Maurice Spates as well. Because with Andrew Bogut hobbled, playing or not, him not being 100%. Spates needs to come in there and be able to do some things. Festus Azili needs to be able to, to do some things. You're going to need these guys to step up into the fray and handle their business. So, yes, Steph Curry has to recognize Russell Westbrook is no joke, and he's coming. He's not backing up. And I'm not saying that Steph Curry can't handle the challenge because he's Steph Curry. I'm saying you have to treat this superstar with, with, with the respect he deserves because in his own way, Russell Westbrook is close to being every bit as lethal as Steph Curry is. Treat him with the respect he deserves. Outside of that, your bench players have to step up for you and offset the physicality that OKC will inevitably throw in your direction. Festus Azili and Maurice Spates have to answer the call. Andre Iguodala has to shut down somebody, at least to some degree, and Sean Livingston, who can ball in his own right, has to take advantage of some of those mismatches. By the way, I thought Iguodala did a really good job on Kevin Durant defensively in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I'm until, not saying he didn't. I'm, yeah, he, he yeah. did until Kevin finally rose up over him and made the shot at the end of the game that was actually well, that final nail in the coffin kind of shot. You're not gonna stop you're not gonna stop Kevin no. Durant, period. But what you can do is preoccupy him by making sure you show up and produce when you have the ball yeah. on offense. Andre Iguodala is a better offensive player than he showed in game one. Show is Sean agree. Livingston, and that is what I am talking about. I, I only wish you could be there tonight because I'm afraid it won't count unless mm. you're there. Well, you know, I mean, you, you are right about that. Yeah. I mean, the party lot, starts when I show up. Yeah, a lot of ladies But then again, then home. again, yeah. to, to, to yeah. indict, well, let's not go that far. <laughs> but let's, let, let, let's indict myself in this regard. I was in Cleveland last night. I'll be damned if that was a party because it was a thumper. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I mean, and, see, see, Anderson and those guys at the strike, man, I was struggling to stay awake. I ain't going to lie to you. Tonight you won't be struggling. Game two, tonight, right. 9 Eastern. We can't wait. We'll react to all of it tomorrow. But when we come back, we need to react to this. It was the puncher around the world this weekend, and now Rubnet Odor has been suspended eight games for it. Did the all right, Trugnet Odor has been suspended eight games by Major League Baseball for punching Jose Bautista and fighting in Sunday's brawl between the Blue Jays and Rangers. Skip, did they get this suspension right? Stephen A., I thought they got it exactly right. Not too harsh, not too soft. I thought the message was, okay, we'll let you guys settle these things yourselves to a point. You can't actually throw punches that connect. When you do that, it's going to cost you a basically a week's worth of games. Skip, I completely disagree with you. I think the suspension should have been a minimum of 20 games. Wow. And I'm not talking about the here's why. Because I understand certain things come with baseball. You get hit by a pitch, you charge the mound, you tussle, stuff like that. 
I'm focused on the punch and I'm focused on fairness. If this had been an NBA player that connected with a punch like that, Canelo Alvarez hitting Amir Khan, yeah. basically, except Batista didn't fall. What would we be talking about? What would we be mandating? But because it's a baseball player, he only gets to get eight games. I'm not satisfied. Wow. To be continued tomorrow. Mm, yes. Stephen A., great to have you back. As always, thank you Good guys for back. hanging with us. We will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the game tonight. I'll be suspended until 2017 at the earliest. Mm. So the question I ask you, Skip Bayless, yes. will Brady play in the first four games this coming season? <sighs> Stephen A. Smith, I still believe Tom Brady will be eligible to play the first four games. But I am the first to admit to you here today, this is becoming so complex legally, as Molly just tried to explain, it is way, way over my head at this point. In fact, I'm getting to the point where as I read the stories, my eyes cross. I, I just, I, I can't digest, I can't compute. I frankly get bored to tears trying to read the stories. But suffice it to say, there are still two or three other legal avenues that Brady and his team can pursue, if nothing else, for delay tactics. I still think they have a chance to win this going forward. It's going to be extremely costly in terms of money and time. But Tom Brady has fought this far, and I'm going to remind you, we now have four judges' rulings, one the first time and then three the second time. But if you take them in totality, you have two who have ruled publicly for Tom Brady and two against. So I still think he has a case. I still think he can fight the city hall, the unbeatable city hall that is the National Football League. If you want to debate how much money the... NFL Players Association could, con should continue to spend or you could say waste on this process, you're free to do so. I I'm to the point where I would hope that Tom Brady would be dedicating some of his own funds, the funds of his and his wife's, because they do have their own funds, toward this process. I don't know how that all falls out or what the NFLPA's responsibilities remain here, but I do think Tom Brady has fought this far and you can just see by his character, he will continue to fight this to the quote unquote legal death. I do think he'll get this delayed and I do think he'll play the first four games. You're probably right. He'll probably get it delayed. He may lose in the end, but he's going to delay it. He's going to force the union uh, to spend more of its money. Um, I th I've, I've gotten to a point where I think it's incumbent upon the players to speak up and say, damn, uh, when's enough? Yeah, is I, enough? I'm, I'm, not, because, oh, I, I, I'm not opposed to that. I got you. I yes. hear you. Because, I mean, all the money that is costing them millions. Millions. And this is millions of dollars yep. that could be utilized uh, to help a, a, a bevy of other players with a bevy of other issues. Great point. This is about the integrity, the league's, you know, not the integrity, but the league's power. The yep. league is not trying to give it up and the players association no matter how right it may be in the end what it comes down to is that you're fighting for the courts to give you something that you surrendered during collective bargaining negotiations that's what this comes down to they can slice it any way they want to and tom brady again this is about him not wanting to miss any games it can't be about his image skip because people at this point are either for him or against him. Nothing that happens through, uh, through all this minutia, nothing that, happen, that has happened is going to change anybody's thought process. There are those that believe this is much ado about nothing and that the NFL completely overreached and were excessive. And there are those who believe that Tom Brady is guilty of sin. It's not going to change it and he's smart enough to know that. So this is about him fighting to make sure that he doesn't get to miss any games whatsoever. And all I'm saying is, is that it's got to a point where it's, 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 it's elevated beyond ridiculousness, and I'm going to put that on Tom Brady. Because for the league, it's not about Tom Brady anymore. <clears throat> for the league, it's about their power and making sure they don't allow a precedent to be set where others can follow Tom Brady and challenge their authority. That's what it's about with them. With Tom Brady, it's all about Tom Brady. And I agree with my man Mark May. 
you know, extraordinary college football analyst for us who came on the show and spoke about this weeks ago, where he said, put on your big boy pants and just own up. Now, you might not need to own up to the guilt in it all, because if you're innocent, why should you admit that you're guilty? I'm with you on that skip. But it does come a point in time where you need to think beyond yourself. And there's a whole bevy of players. Now, the union has put forth the good fight. And it's speculated that in excess of $7 million have been spent on Tom Brady and this whole deflate gate fiasco alone. Yep. The NFL has deep pockets, rife with about 32 billionaires. But in the case of Tom Brady and the Players Association, their pockets are not nearly as deep. All you're doing at this point is making sure that lawyers get paid. Because you're not going to change public perception one way or the other. And you can delay it. And if you end up pulling it off and you don't get suspended, God bless you. But it will be at a hefty, hefty price to a body of yeah. players. So I think it's got to the point where the players need to step up and say, look, man, we side with you. We agree with you. Roger Goodell ain't worth the damn. He did this. He did this. He did. Y'all can say all of that stuff that they say. But in the end, don't let your personal emotions cost you millions in the coffers when all you've got to do is eat this and take the suspension when chances are you'll come back and be in the playoffs anyway. It's gotten to that okay. point. Somebody needs to tell Two me. last quick points. Mm -hmm. you, you, you distill this case down to it's now about the NFL's power that it won through collective bargaining. Yet I remind you, those three judges who ruled in the Circuit Court of Appeals, they all dealt with the merits of Deflategate in their their arguments that they're, you know, their conclusions. No, no, no. I'm, talk <clears throat> I'm, talking, I'm talking about what the NFL's purpose is. Yeah. In other words, this is the Deflategate okay. incident. So the judges have to, de have to debate the Ted Wells investigation, yeah. the authenticity of it, they the did. validity of it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But the agenda is what I'm speaking okay, I of. Got it. The agenda of the NFL okay. is to protect and hold their power. Final point, and this is just me from a distance, but <clears throat> it did surprise me a little bit to your point about how so many people think that Tom Brady is guilty of sin and they're not going to change their opinion. There, there must not be enough of those people in the eyes of what's the new commercial that Brady's doing? I don't even know what it is for a mattress company, right, that, that, that he's promoting now. I, I think it's a mattress company. But, but my point is he has a new national commercial whoa, whoa. Uh, that, that he's doing. So, so it's like... That company thinks that Tom Brady's well, still pretty popular, right? Well, 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 first of all, I think that makes Tom Brady look even more petty. You're, you're making my point. My point to you, Skip, is this. Just because you think he's not innocent doesn't mean that, you, that, that it warrants all of this. I don't care whether Tom Brady has something to do with the footballs being deflated or not. It doesn't take away from his greatness one bit. It doesn't make me look at him like his integrity is diminished in my eyes by any stretch of the imagination. I think he's a great ambassador for the game of football. I think he's a phenomenal quarterback. He's clearly a winner, one of the greatest ever, and there's nothing that, th that this whole deflate gate fiasco has insinuated that to me sullies his name or his brand in any way. But because his popularity is still what it is, makes it even less sense why he's going through all of this at the expense of the body of NFL players. I feel like I'm having deja vu here, but if he serves his suspension, then yeah. he would be eligible to return week five, and that would be at Cleveland, and it's Simmons Beauty Rest yeah. Mattresses. They're inflated. So, so Don't worry. They're not they're deflated. inflated? <laughs> they're not deflated oh. mattresses. But it's a national campaign, yeah. so they must think Tom's still of course. pretty yes. credible, right? Yes. And yeah. speaking of Simmons, let's talk about the NBA draft lottery last night. So obviously, the uh, Sixers won it, and a lot of people think that LSU freshman Ben Simmons will go first overall. Are the guys on board with this? We'll discuss after the break.